Hello. Everyone hear me OK? Yeah, yeah it's a mouthful. Uh, I still haven't gotten the right elevator pitch for my talk. Um, several different dimensions uh, that we're going to talk about. Relational databases, NoSQL databases, uh, all about TLS, some about local instances, some about the cloud, and kind of cover the, the gamut there and how you can test their TLS configuration. So quickly, a brief bit about myself. I'm Stephen Donovan, a security engineer at Security Innovation based out of Seattle, Washington. Um, my main Google Juice fame is for working on the Samba team about a decade ago. Uh, I've sat on the server side of the client-server relationship for most of my career. And I like protocols, and I like box with boxes with disks in them. A uh, quick outline today's talk, uh, kind of hit five points. Uh, this was a research project of mine, um, independent research, scratching my own itch, problem I had that I wanted to solve. Uh, so talk a bit about the motivation, uh, the scope uh, of the research, the tool I built, uh, some data, and, and conclusions. So right into the motivation. The network is hostile. It's not really uh, a question anymore. I think we can all agree. Uh, the uh, Snowden documents uh, that are now famous and, and well-trodden uh, told us that. They confirmed our fears uh, that there are actors, nation states and otherwise, who are actively monitoring our traffic. If you do not control your network end to end, you uh, should expect that your traffic is being viewed and possibly uh, interfered with. Uh, and the solution that we have is end-to-end is -end encryption. Customer data is the target. Your simple web app, very simple, no, no load balancers, no, uh, no web application firewalls or IDS. You got the client that's speaking HTTPS to the web app server, which is talking a proprietary database protocol uh, to uh, a database instance. We've done a great job on that front end securing HTTPS. All the data that goes over that front end surely goes over that back end. And that back end just hasn't kept up as well with uh, progress in, in the front end TLS implementations. We need to make these two hops equal in their security posture. And then if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. I was on an engagement pen testing a application just as I just showed. Uh, ran my usual TLS checker tools against the front end check. Went to run them against the Postgres database in the back end, and they didn't work. So Google around, and, and no tool existed. So thus, two months of research and, and uh, this presentation. So quick um, overview uh, TLS configuration. There's five things that we want to get right. Uh, and there's five things we want to validate that we got right once, uh, once we've configured a web server or, or a Postgres server. Number one, is it enabled? Number two, are we using the latest protocols? Right now, currently, uh, TLS uh, version 1.2. Number three, cipher strength. This is where a lot of people focus. Do we have perfect forward sequence? Do we have enough bits? Are we using a mode that doesn't have any known vulnerabilities? Fourth, the certificate chain, uh, trusted CA at the top, and, and signing signed certificates intermediate uh, and, and on the server. And then fifth, just the known cutely named vulnerabilities. I was tempted to put in a, is this name a Pokemon, or is it a TLS vulnerability slide? But uh, I, I left it out. And as I mentioned, we have a success story. Uh, ever since 2013, and then even a little bit before that, uh, our usage and our configuration of HTTPS, HTTP over TLS, has gotten better. Uh, the Google Transparency Report uh, here shows that beautiful up and to the right graph. Uh, this is from July 2015. 
Qualice has SSL Pulse, which shows a point in time, current known vulnerabilities, current uh, poor ciphers, how many people are using them across the whole uh, scannable web. Good news here, 2.5% have a bad certificate chain, not a small number, a relatively small number. And tools. People love writing TLS checking tools. I think this is like an interview question or something. Uh, I went looking. I found dozens. Um, I dove in deeper. These are the 13 that um, look to be actively developed and still utilized. Uh, so there's plenty of ways that you can uh, check your Apache or your Nginx configuration for TLS. Some of these are open source, some of them are closed source, some are online, uh, some are CLI scanners, uh, Python and Perl, and, and uh, of course OSAFT is the, is the OWASP uh, tool uh, that's very good and actually has the most hits on Google of all of these. And then after, uh, in addition to just confirming, uh, there's some good tools uh, for uh, web servers on doing the configuration. Uh, with Mozilla, you don't even have to think about it. You just type in your version and it tells you, put these lines in your .conf file, done. You don't have to be a TLS expert, which is good, because TLS is complicated and we all need to be using it, but we certainly shouldn't all need to be experts. So that's HTTPS, it's going well, and uh, you know, skip to the end, uh, I wanna get there with databases. We're not there right now at all, there'll be the doom and gloom later, but we should get there because it's as important as the front end. And certainly it's, it's one person, two month research project. It's not me who's gonna be doing it, which is why I'm hoping uh, to get some excitement in here about, uh, about making this section of the problem more of a community issue. So on this scope, uh, we've got a lot of different databases. Uh, had to pick a, pick a couple. DatabaseEngines.com keeps a ranking. I'm not even sure of their exact methodology, but it seemed pretty solid. Uh, they're top five. Oracle, MySQL, Microsoft SQL Server, Postgres, and MongoDB. MongoDB being the most popular NoSQL database. Um, so I took this ranking, and instead of just going off top, uh, I filtered it through another search engine, Shodan. Uh, which uh, mass scans the internet for, for publicly accessible services. This was surprising, uh, definitely. Four and a half million MySQL instances are on the public internet today, or in April when I, when I took these stats. About an order of magnitude less in Postgres, and about an order of magnitude less there in MongoDB, but still a lot of databases listening on um, public IPs. So these are the three databases I chose. Uh, they were in the top five on DB engines, and they, they obviously, they were in the top three on, uh, on public IPs. Uh, so this is where we need TLS to be right. Now you might be asking yourself, as I did, why are these on the internet? This is the back end, and there could probably be a whole talk about that. Um, I talked to my colleagues, I've asked a lot of people, we have some guesses, we have some reasons, not excuses and not, not requirements, reasons, I guess. Uh, I mean, bad configuration, obviously, is probably number one. People are just doing it wrong. Uh, but remote administration via the database console instead of just SSH, okay. Mix of self-hosted, the hybrid, uh, data center. Uh, I mean, I'm gonna go into a bunch of different cloud providers who are, are hosting uh, SQL instances. So the, the, the network is getting fuzzy, what's public and what's private. Uh, or, or two tier architectures, uh, thick client. There, there, are, there are reasons, you know, you, whether we would accept that from a security review as the best possible design, not, but regardless, there's a lot of them on public IPs, and the public internet is not necessarily less safe than your, than your LAN with internal threat actors. It's not necessarily less safe uh, than the WAN between your data centers, uh, even if you're paying for lease lines. So uh, we'll gloss over uh, you know, the different threats to each 
and just say we should have encryption everywhere. Uh, it, I don't think that's too controversial. Maybe there's a priority listing of where you implement it first, but we should have end-to-end -end encryption on all of our network connections. So, I showed you all these wonderful tools that, uh, that exist for HTTPS, and I thought to myself, I'll write another one. The world needs 14. I'm kidding, that's a joke. Two of these guys actually had a little bit of database uh, scanning already built in. Um, the two open source scanners, uh, SSL scan, SSLIs, they, they, had, they had played in this water a little bit. Uh, I looked at them. They they'd made like baby steps. They had a few bugs. Uh, I could have uh, added on to either of these guys. Um, where I went first uh, was my favorite tool, test SSL at SH. It's CLI. It's actively developed open source, easy to commit patches to. Uh, I like the output. It's my current preferred tool on my uh, pen test engagements. It's a reasonable implementation. It's, it's just bash uh, that wraps the OpenSSL client tool and then gives you some nice, pretty output uh, from it. So no reason to rewrite uh, from scratch, write from scratch, or, or do this myself. I added on to existing tool. Uh, and before I even thought about doing a talk on this, uh, when I just asked for some time to make this tool better, I definitely was following the programmer's credo. Postgres actually took about a day to add to the tool. MongoDB, um, technically I didn't even do anything. I just had to figure out the right way to run it and then, and then change some detection um, in the tool. My SQL, that's where the two months came in. And I'm still working on it. So a quick explanation of Start TLS, um, if you guys uh, are unaware. Uh, both, uh, both the MySQL and the Postgres database use Start TLS, not regular TLS. Start TLS is also called Opportunistic TLS. Uh, it's good in that you use the same port, so you don't have to have a whole separate port uh, wasted. It's good because uh, it can optimistically upgrade. A negotiation takes place between client and server, and they say, oh, I support TLS. Oh, you do too? All right, well, let's, let's go there. Uh, it's bad because this negotiation is in plain text. And thus, if there is an active man in the middle, uh, they can just downgrade uh, out of TLS. So uh, what's different and interesting about uh, these databases is that you, you have to require TLS. Uh, people want to say, well, I'll just do TLS on the new clients and we'll let the old clients do plain text, but that opens you up to all clients um, failing. So you have to require on the server side TLS, uh, otherwise a man in the middle can, can downgrade you. What the actual my server, uh, sorry, my SQL, uh, Negotiation looks like uh, here, TCP, SYN, SYNAC, AC. Uh, and then the server sends its greeting with a bunch of bits. Here's the things I support. Here's my version number. I support TLS. The client sends back uh, its request. Here's the things that I support. I support TLS. And then the client immediately, uh, because it knows server supports TLS, will start the standard TLS client hello that you would get over, over HTTPS. Uh, so this is the common start TLS um, negotiation. It's different for every single protocol. Uh, the IMAP and POP, the, the mail protocols use start TLS. They, they have their own way of doing it. But it's always this sort of one or two packets negotiate and then start a common TLS connection. So adding to the tool wasn't, wasn't that difficult. Basically, I just had to fake that I'm a database server for two packets and then switch to the, the common TLS routines. It, it wasn't a lot of work. And so, test SSL uh, .sh, also conveniently the website name, uh, released on Monday, uh, has this capability in it natively in the current released version. Download uh, the tool, uh, download a custom OpenSSL binary uh, because uh, the implementation there is, is still in master and not released run it against the port, and, uh, and voila. 
you can uh, take a picture, certainly, of this slide. Uh, there's also a blog post, um, blog.securityinnovation.com, uh, up right now that, that has the specifics. And please, start, start running it. Download it, start running it. If you have a database server anywhere, run it, uh, run it today. Run it while I'm talking. So for completeness, you do need that custom OpenSSL package. Um, also uh, already compiled and on TestSSL, you can pull it down from there. And again, the instructions are, are on the blog. We all know that live demos are a fool's errand. And I'm not a fool. Here's a screenshot. This is the tool running against uh, Postgres, testing protocols, as we discussed, testing ciphers, testing forward sequency, and, and about uh, two more pages of, of tests that it goes through, red, green, yellow, with the results. So I have the tool. I want to run it against these databases. Before we get into the, uh, the hard data, quick aside about MySQL. This was one of the complications. I think everyone's fairly uh, well aware MySQL has two editions. They, they were uh, the first to do the dual licensing model, GPL for open source, and, and different license for if you, if you pay them money. So there's still two versions, even under Oracle. Um, what I was unaware of is that they use two different SSL libraries. MySQL is um, it's a licensing issue, like all great things in open source. They, they believe that there are some issues uh, linking in OpenSSL in their community version. They don't do it. They use a library called YASL, uh, yet another SSL library. YASL uh, was implemented in 2004 and was a fine TLS library in 2004. Uh, it is no longer actively developed. Um, the company that owns it and supports it tells you quite plainly it's no longer developed and that it should not be used. But Community Edition in your Ubuntu 16.04, your latest CentOS and Red Hat is still shipping with this TLS library, which as you can imagine means things aren't as secure as they could be. You can recompile from source uh, and use OpenSSL. I did that. I tested against it. I'll show you the results. Uh, but of course, as an admin of an actual site, keeping up to date with versions and compiling from source and, and distributing it, it's impractical to actually do that, I think, um, when you've just got the D package or the RPM right there. So into the data. Uh, a bit of an eye chart. I'm not going to go through every one. It's the exact same scan data from the tool uh, and four different versions. So uh, we have the MySQL YASL um, dpackage edition, um, MySQL recompiled with OpenSSL, uh, mostly recent Postgres, and uh, the latest and greatest MongoDB. This was Ubuntu 16.04 server. Uh, tried to use the packages if I could, um, grab them. Uh, and compiled if I had to. And uh, here are three of those five categories. What protocols are supported, what ciphers are supported, and uh, what vulnerability, known vulnerabilities are there. This is the default install before any hardening. You just install the package, get a connection to the IP, TLS is on by the default, here's what you get. And there's some red up there. I don't know, you just call it unsurprisingly, the defaults are not secure. Uh, you have to do some work. TLS is not required by default. We talked start TLS easily man in the middle. Um, thankfully, most of the critical vulns uh, the really bad ones, the, these ones that, that are vulnerable to aren't as bad. They're mostly like DOS attacks and, and sort of very impractical attacks. They're not the, the remote code execution attacks. But what I consider, in my opinion, blockers in every column if you just install the database. Not good. 
So you're a diligent administrator. You read through every line of the TLS documentation for each one of these products, and you flip all the switches, and then you run the scanner again. And this is what you get. Way better and pretty good, uh, but still not perfect. Uh, this is the absolute uh, hardest configuration you can create uh, with a local uh, database instance uh, as an admin alone without, re without changing any code. And, and still some yellow and, and, and one red. So uh, surprising results. I, I expect it to be a, a little better, um, but now we can measure. Now we have, uh, now we move on to improvement. So another facet I wanted to, to look at with the tool is the cloud. Uh, they're supposed to be managing all this for me. They're, they're going to make sure my instance stays up. They're going to make sure I have secure defaults, especially since I'm likely on uh, the public internet connecting to this instance. No. Uh, to, uh, we're, I'm still working with, uh, with several providers. I tested four cloud providers, um, definitely disclosing these issues to them. So no names here, uh, not trying to too publicly shame anyone. Just trying to make, measure the situation and make it better. Um, I randomized this data, but amazingly, uh, the worst provider is on the left, and the best provider, who did a pretty good job, uh, Cloud Provider 4, is on the right. Uh, the worst provider uh, was worse than the local instance. Poodle and Logjam uh, are serious vulnerabilities, and if you just throw up an instance, five minutes and a credit card, you, uh, you have, you're vulnerable. The best provider had uh, TLS required by default. Will not accept uh, unencrypted connections. You have to specifically downgrade your security if you want to do that. Great. This table has, has different rows. It's a little more of a, a meta scan. It's not what the tool outputs, but it's, it's looking through um, those same cloud providers and what, um, uh, what settings they offer. And um, the worst part is not only uh, is the default poor on cloud provider one, but you are, can't change anything. Even if you know what you're doing, you cannot configure any of the TLS settings on the database instance to make it better. So uh, you just can't be secure with, uh, with that cloud provider. That's the raw data. Um, some conclusions. We talked about it already, but uh, there's some good news. PostgreSQL on a local instance can be configured to be secure. Silver star Postgres would have been a gold star if the defaults were secure already, but silver star. Auto-generated uh, science certificates was on that chart. This is something where the cloud helps you out. It's the first step in defining TLS. It's, it's a boring step. It's, it's by rote. Good that uh, we already have certs automatically generated when you, when you fire up an instance. And that Cloud Provider 4 probably did a better job than you would have. Like, certainly quicker. Credit card in five minutes and you have a, a SQL server. Did, a, did a, a good job of defining the, uh, the most secure settings that you could have. The bad. Cloud Provider 1 did a worse job than I think anyone here could have done. Uh, five minutes reading some docs, switching some, some uh, settings on. And, and overall, it was, it was very mixed results. Um, poor defaults in the cloud. Um, two of the auto-generated certs were still using SHA-1, which we know is, is out. We've known is out for, for a good year now. Uh, three out of four. Uh, one, you couldn't configure at all. Um, two of them you could configure, but some of the issues that the tool detected you could not change. So you only had partial TLS configuration. 
uh, and uh, only one uh, had required TLS by default. Those on-prem databases, the poor defaults we talked about, and two things that the, the data also doesn't show. Um, I assumed someone had already done this. I really didn't think I'd be the first one here. It's 2017, but I hit some, some silly server bugs, uh, like not even security issues, just implementation issues um, with these servers. And so I, I was the first one uh, here, just knocking on these rather simple um, combinations of, of TLS requests that a client might make. Uh, in addition, I don't have a full history, but the settings that you need are, are only in the newest versions of these databases. Um, in general, if you're using a database version, Postgres or MySQL or MongoDB, that's older than two years, it's worse. It's much worse. You can't, you can't configure any of these. Uh, you can't configure require TLS, so uh, you're always um, man in the middle on, uh, on start TLS. And the MySQL Community Edition, it's not future-proof. Uh, that YASA library is, is long in the tooth and needs to be replaced, and, uh, and it hasn't happened yet. Um, it's, uh, I, I can't recommend MySQL Community Edition from a TLS perspective. You can mitigate it, of course. I mean, if, um, if you can, forget the network altogether. Uh, only listen on your local transport, um, uh, loop back or, or uh, loop back or Unix domain sockets, uh, or, or compile it yourself. And the ugly. Originally, I had high hopes of writing the tool and doing a couple scans and then uh, doing an internet-wide survey and giving you the, you know, the actual in practice. After seeing that uh, you can't configure these things secure, especially on older versions, uh, I just forewent that because I think I already know the results. Uh, so uh, here we're at uh, zero day on, on starting improving all of these TLS configs on, on the live instances out there. Which is my hopeful uh, task for you guys. Uh, tools available right now. Now you can measure. Uh, now you can improve. Uh, DB administrators, uh, DevOps people, pen testers, um, other tools. It's a fairly uh, easy add um, for a couple for, for Postgres at least. Uh, add these checks to your tools. Start running them on a regular basis. We'll start filing bugs, and we'll we'll start that up into the right curve that uh, HTTPS has successfully done. Quick thank you to my employer, Security Innovation. They gave me two full months of independent research to do exactly this, um, which, uh, which was a huge amount of, amount of uh, trust. And uh, Dirk Weta is the creator of Test SSL, great guy to work with, uh, took all my PRs very quickly and very happily. Thank you guys for watching. Um, any questions? No, so MariaDB, uh, uh, lots of other MySQL forks, uh, an exercise for the, for the audience. Hi, um, I'm the author of the Mozilla SSL guidelines, so thank you for mentioning them. That's, that said, um, we also wrote scanning tools that you didn't mention, so you lost a point there. Great, <laughs> yeah, email them to me. They didn't come up on Google. Yeah, no, there are dozens of them. Um, so the question I have, it, it took us years, essentially, since we started the, the TLS configuration effort, uh, I think four years ago, and Better Crypto was starting at the same time. And it took us years to get um, secure defaults configured in Nginx and Apache. Um, and now we're finally getting those developers and managers of web frameworks and standard libraries to actually apply default, you know strong cipher suits by default, so you don't have RC4 by default. Um, so good luck to you in trying to get the same thing done for databases. I think you'll need it. Um, one question I had was, did you look into 
uh, client libraries to connect to those databases and what kind of Cypher suite they support and what kind of level of TLS they support? Uh, yeah, and shorter answer, uh, no. Um, future work slide. Uh, yeah, there's, there's more here. There's uh, obviously the client side has to, has to be configured just as securely. It can ignore uh, the certificate if it wants. Uh, so I didn't do any, any work there. Um, all of these databases have peer-to-peer uh, -peer modes where they're talking to each other, other instances, uh, also hopefully over TLS. Um, so there's a lot of area to look at, uh, to look at there. Um, MySQL had you know, some pretty big vulnerabilities in the client uh, that came out, and so that got some attention. I think that was May of this year, um, and, and hopefully it's getting better. So uh, no, this is purely server-side, and yeah, lots Lots more, uh, lots more ground to cover.